If you have an AMD graphics card, you are in for a treat, my friends. Also, something very cool. PSVR 2 is going to be able to be used on PC, which I find extremely interesting. AMD's upcoming Turin Zen 5 CPUs are going to support four terabytes of RAM. And then lastly, AMD's Zen 3 and Zen 2 CPUs are now vulnerable to Zen Hammer prompting memory leakage. So security warning. Anyways, first up is AMD boosting the Radeon RX 7900 GRE with overclocking in their latest drivers. AMD is unlocking the 7900 GRE, obviously, with the new driver update. And it says that with the release of the AMD software 24.3.1, AMD has unlocked the overclocking potential for the Radeon 7900 GRE graphics cards. And now users of this graphics card can overclock the GPU GDDR6 memory to higher levels. These overclock clocks can enable a huge increase in GPU performance. The percentage is like 15% if I'm not mistaken. Title doesn't say it, but I'm pretty sure there's no, it was 15%, I swear. Okay, so here, through overclocking, Tech Power Up has managed to achieve 14.9% performance boost with their Radeon RX 7900 GRE graphics card. That's enough to get the GRE to start biting on the heels of AMD's more expensive Radeon RX 7900 XT. So for those of you that are unaware of this, man, this graphics card, this is an extremely good value for a graphics card. For those of you that may have seen benchmarks on an RTX 4070 Ti, this is a little bit better than an RTX 4070 Ti without overclocking the GPU. So when you overclock this GPU, you're going to be getting, I want to say probably about a 20% increase in performance over the RTX 4070 because it, it is just a very small amount over the base RTX 4070 Ti. But still, this is really awesome to see AMD whatever increasing the performance of your graphics card with a very 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 small update i think that that's super cool so the next thing i find this super cool and super interesting because my friend actually has a racing simulator with the um the ocu the new oculus quest there i forget what one it is i'm not big into vr it's not really my thing uh the the floating hands when you're like when you're inside of the it just it i don't know what it is it's just it's something about the floating hands like if i was in vr and it showed like my arms like reaching out and yes i'm fully aware the field of view would like distort the way the arms look and it would like kind of bubbly the arms i get it i do understand it but even the bubbly effect of the arms which some games do actually include i prefer that much more over the just the floating hands i just think that's super awkward so psvr is just it hasn't been my thing yet but this is very very cool and with dude just with all these like new ai features that nvidia is releasing dude like i really am i'm a gamer man i like playing video games i'm not like a hardcore gamer i don't sit down and play video games for more than like 20 or 30 minutes at a time it is just i cannot do that and to be completely honest that's why like some of the games you see me playing i just don't i don't i'm not like level 100 inside of these games is because dude i grew up with like the older super nintendo games where i could like hop into a game play a couple of levels get a checkpoint and be done within like 10 or 15 minutes whereas like nowadays in order to do anything inside of a video game you're like forced to play it for like 20 hours just to get the thing that you actually want which is why i like playing games like starfield no man's sky uh what's another one that minecraft is another one grand theft auto is another one and just all these uh what arc survival the dinosaur game is because they have these things like they're prompts they're they're basically prompts inside of the video game where you can bring up this like cheat code literally in the game i'm not talking about like hacking the game or anything but it's like cheat codes that pop up and you can type in these like prompts so that you can get a certain like thing inside of that game or you can unlock all of the things inside of that game or you can go into creative mode like no man's sky so you don't have to like loot a bunch of materials and that kind of stuff but either way um i know i got a little bit off topic there the 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 vry i blah, blah, blah. Why is that so hard to pronounce? I V R Y 
is a platform that enables non-PC VR headsets and devices to be used with Steam. After cracking PSVR 2 hardware authentication, it made an adapter available to those wanting to use the headset on PC, specifically Steam VR. The PSVR 2 headset is impressive for 550 buckaroos and you get a 4K OLED OLED, OLED, OLED display with a per eye resolution of 2000 by you guys understand like why this is so cool right please tell me you guys think that this is just as cool as I do I think that this is super sick to be fair dude like all game companies should do this at this point man like at what point are like companies gonna realize that not bringing their titles to PC is just gonna call their is just gonna cause their titles to be stolen especially right now where when you buy stuff, you don't own it anymore. It's like, it just, I don't, yeah, dude. This is, I've always been a physical gamer. To be honest, like 95% of the games I have on PC, have I've gotten for free because with my PC building business, you can call me a, a, a prick for doing this as much as you want. But guess what, my friends? I do not charge anybody anything for the PCs that I build them. It is for the cost of the parts. That is it. So, when I buy an AMD CPU, because AMD is the one that's been doing this most frequently lately, AMD is like constantly offering brand new games with their CPUs. So the Avatar game, I got for free. Starfield, I got for free. Ne the Need for Speed game, I got for free. Call of Duty, I got for free. And then you have all these other games, Epic Game Store, like two to three free games every single week uh steam we always have free like free to play weekends and then free games in general then you got gog then you got uh whatever there humble bundle and then you got the indiegogo and then you have whatever you guys get my point so anyways i don't even remember where i was going with that let's get back to the <laughs> i'm really <laughs> I'm so good at getting off when I find stuff that I'm super interested in I get so off topic um, So this right here a new leak suggests that AMD's upcoming Turin Zen 5 CPU is going to support four terabytes of RAM at six Dude, I just I'm curious to like how like that's a that's a big uh, from what I'm under at least from what I'm aware of isn't like the So is that because you need the CPU? to communicate with the motherboard yeah i don't know guys i'm just i'm gonna move on to the next article because i'm gonna sit there and try to figure all that out so next up amd's zen 3 and zen 2 cpus are vulnerable to zen hammer prompting memory leakage using the dram supporting error connecting codes ecc AMD is continuing to recommend the following existing DRAM mitigation in order to row. I'm guessing not many of you have this, but either way, if you do have this, you may want to be staying up to date with the security problems that AMD is going to be having for their Zen 3 and Zen 2 architecture CPUs and stuff. But anyways, man, let me know what you guys think about this PSVR 2 up. I think that's really, really, really interesting to me. Let me know down in the comment if you can explain this to me again, numbers a lot of numbers like that confuse me and then when we're going back and forth between all of the numbers it's like yo it just doesn't make sense to me appreciate the support and i appreciate those of you that understand i'm still in the learning process of computer science so eventually i'll get to a point where i understand the millions of numbers combined together and then going back and forth of why the cpu needs this for the motherboard and this for the ram and then whatever <laughs> so yeah catch you guys next one peace